eating clean and going green makes sense. But the question is, what to drink? So we've come into Corny and Barrow Wine Merchants to talk to head buyer Rebecca Palmer and to taste some wines. So veganism is a bit of a hot topic right now. It is, isn't it? It seems like the whole world is going vegan. There's vegan sausage rolls, vegan fish and chips, vegan burgers. Um, And I think that's partly because it's being driven by a lot of things, not just ethics, but also concerns about health and sustainability. Uh, I mean, research now suggests that um, avoiding meat and dairy is one of the biggest ways you can reduce your environmental impact, for example. So, Susie, what does the vegan diet mean to you? Well I mean plant based so um, no meat, no fish, no eggs, no dairy, no honey Um, but we did actually we talked to the vegan society about this and they said it's hard to be perfect you know we live in a a non-vegan world so essentially it's just trying to reduce the suffering of, of animals. So what about the wines then? I mean we're getting asked more and more about about vegan wines by our customers you know, tell us a little bit about that. Well, a bit like vegetarian, as a starting point, um, no animal-derived clarifying agents. So when you're trying to clarify your wine, you can't be using things like isinglass, which is from fish, or gelatin derived from animals. Um, and in the case of vegans, obviously no casein, which is milk derived, or albumin, egg derived. But there are, there are vegan alternatives. And there are also bigger questions. So if you like um, biodynamics, for example, uh, animals are an Topic. integral part of the biodynamic farming Mm. system. Also things like certain packaging materials may use certain glues which have animal derived um, elements or or, you know certain corks can can have animal derived emulsifiers. Mm. So Mm. I think it's it's, um, emulsions, it's it's a bigger topic as well. What I think would be great to see would be a bit more clarity and information so people can make their own minds up. Yes and help them you know make an informed decision. Exactly. Well we have a few wines here that I thought we could uh, try out. All of these are vegan. Mm-hmm. So, Pete, I've got a little bit of this yeah, wine in my glass. I pour some of this? Pour it? Yeah. Bit of an unusual varietal and slightly off dry, which I thought would be quite interesting in terms of, you know, vegan yeah. cooking, etc. Comes from Hungary and, well, taste it. Mm. So this is ferment. This, this is ferment. Great variety, great. yeah, yeah. And usually it's mm. quite dry, isn't it? But actually, this one's lovely and sort mm. of succulent and round. Mm. It's got a little bit of That's the idea, residual yeah. sugar. And interestingly, I mean, when we were doing the vegan um, vegan diet, well, first of all, you've kind of got to uh, embrace it wholeheartedly and restock your fridge and, and pantry because you really need exactly the right ingredients. Um, but what we found was we, we used a lot of coconut, coconut milk and spice, so sort of nice, mild Asian-style curries, which really suit a wine with a little bit of sugar. So whether that's a Riesling or, in this case, yeah. very unusual, you know, a, a ferment. Mm. So the honey comes from the glass. It does. I mean, it's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it it's really just, does. It's You're beautifully right. complex yeah. and elegant. And something completely different as well, which is always mm. nice to go for. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought it would be a bit fun. Um, mm. Moving on to the red. Mm-hmm. I don't, uh, want, don't want to lose that. We have here is a Carmen Air from Chile, fresh off um, the boat. Our first shipment. And it's from a new producer to our portfolio, Vigne Laurent. Um, from the Maipo Valley. It's a great and label. It's, the, yeah, it's a cute label. And it's from the Carmen Air Grape. Mm. And, and again, you know, you're looking at something that works well with spice. So mm. Carmen Air tends with its um, kind of roasted pepper character, its own kind of leafy spice works really well with some forms of any form, you know, c- kind of curry, whether it's a meat one or mm. in this case, it would be maybe sweet potato or mushroom, anything with that kind of spice and, and earthiness as well. That's a, a bit, a bit chunky in terms of a, a flavour, if you like. Mm. And it's, quite a, it's got quite a smokiness to it, hasn't it, mm. that wine? And I think that sometimes when you think about wines for, for, for the vegan diet, you might think, well, lighter, you know, just sort of elegant whites and whatnot. But actually, there's a lot of dishes which are really hearty and full mm. of flavour and really cry yeah. out for a heartwarming yeah. red like this one, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, if you've got some harissa, you've got maybe tomato, all that kind of thing that just suits this, this style of wine brilliantly. Yes, because you, you probably wouldn't think that, would you? You'd probably think that v- uh, vegan food would be a little, you know, less deep and rich. But I think there's an umami character about this wine that definitely, you know, could help. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. And, 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 and can match with that lovely umaminess if you're slow cooking tomatoes or you've got lovely mushrooms, mm. you know, some wonderfully rich dishes as part of the vegan diet and that would mm. go brilliantly. Yeah. Um, Good. Our last wine is sweet. Mm. Ooh. Ooh, how and nice. it's um, an unusual wine. It comes from one of my favourite producers who we've been working with for 30 years now. We had a little bit of an anniversary last year. 
and um, they are down in southwest France and they're using really old heritage varieties um, and the style is called Pacherin de Vicbeel. I don't want anybody to have to pronounce that mm -hmm. but, but lovely old varieties and beautiful acidity that comes from being near the Pyrenees mountains try it oh, you know, and the, the great thing about vegan is you can have lots of sweet things you know, there's you? loads of puddings desserts cakes that you can make vegan I mean you, you know you can't use eggs but then you use something else I just didn't and think of that oh, it's great it really mm. is and one of the the desserts that we cooked was um, was a, a, a New York style cheesecake with with rhubarb and orange it's a it's a gaz Oakley recipe he's a brilliant uh, vegan chef and and cookery writer and it would be perfect with this kind of kind of wine because mm. you've got the acidity here haven't you and yeah and then also the sweetness and that lovely fr exotic fruit character which is just like a basket of Gorgeousness, isn't it? Which really you don't well. normally associate with, you know, the old world or, or no. France, but it's so concentrated and tangy. Yeah. Yeah, it's both it's both rich mm. but but really refreshing, and that's mm. exactly what you want in a top quality sweet wine. And it's lovely, and again, something just really different, something with real mm. character and uniqueness to it. To put I on could the table. drink that on its own, though. <laughs> oh, it's Who needs a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Great as food.